Alright, let's see. Keys, keys, keys. I need some Volkswagen keys. Volkswagen keys. There we go. Hi everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. That over there is a 16, 14, something like that. We'll check it in a minute. Volkswagen Passat. Uh, real easy work this time around. We're going to do uh, some brake work to resolve a high speed vibration. Uh, customer states they went metal to metal once upon a time in the rears. Uh, they pad slapped it and uh, there's a vibration at slow speeds that they can feel in the pedal and there's another one at high speeds that they can kind of feel in the seat. Now this particular Volkswagen seems to have 125,738 miles on the odometer and according to our sticker, where's my VIN plate here? 2015. All right, right in the middle. I was wrong on both guesses. Anyway, we're gonna swing this into the shop. We're gonna check out the brakes. Uh, push button, starting the engine. Oh, I heard that this thing was a little, little wiggly, you gotta kinda mess with it some. Begin engine starting sequence now. I can't, there we go, we got it. Gotta wiggle it. All right, let's get this into the shop. Um, as I was saying, if we don't need to replace parts, we're not going to. Um, if the pads are good and I can just kind of sand them down and recondition those, we're gonna do that. We're trying to keep costs as low as possible, but we definitely need to get rid of the uh, vibration while braking. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good video. Opening Z hood. Thinking right about there looks good. Yepper. Parking the auto. Powering down. Pew. I should probably see uh, if I can find another one of those switches too. Raw. Climbing out. Opening the hood. I don't know why we're pulling the hood just for uh, brake inspection, but you know, you gotta do your due diligence. That's what it's about. Let's see what we got in here. Four cylinder TSI. How many liters of raw displacement do we have? 1.8 liters. There they are. All right, 1.8 TSI four cylinder. Good engine. We're done here. Okay, we're setting the rack. I've got the other three arms already in place. Let's go ahead and get this thing off the ground. That one's good. That one's good. Na -na 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 -na. We're good over here. Black subscribe button. Moving on up. Ooh, it's limited. See that? Now, one of the particulars about these Volkswagens is that they have these little plastic covers over the lug nuts. And folks don't like the covers or the little plastic things because they do that. And it's an extra like 20 steps because you've got to pull these guys off and then you can get uh, access to your lug nuts. I mean, it's not a huge deal. It's just part of uh, well, working on a Volkswagen. Now one of these might have a, uh, a wheel lock key hiding behind it. Let's find out. You can tell because the lug nut will be round. Let's see what we get. Come here. Ready. And survey says it's a negative on the uh, wheel lock keys, which is good. Roll car cam get the wheels pulled off this thing. Okie dokes, we've got the nut covers removed. That's not good. Pull the lug nuts out. See that? All right, let's see what we have here. We have like nine, 10 millimeter front pads. Look at that. Those are really good pads. All right, those are gonna stay. We're not gonna put pads on it. Uh, like I said, I'm making an effort to uh, reduce cost as much as possible. These ones are great. See the friction material right there? That's a lot of material. So these are good pads. How's the inboard? Inboards are looking good. Okay. Let's check the rears. Yeah, I pulled the rest of the wheels off when you guys weren't looking. I do that. And similar in the back, eight, 10 millimeters. But again, there's that nasty vibration. So uh, I think we're just gonna do a rotor replacement. We're gonna keep these original pads. I'll pull them out and scuff them up with a, with a Ziz wheel. But uh, 
these things are going to stay. So that's going to save us a, a good chunk of change. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll pull the caliper off. We'll pull this anti-rattle clip off. We've got a set screw and uh, then we can get this rotor peeled off of here. We'll go from there. Here, let's switch sides. You guys come over here and we'll go ahead and turn this guy a little bit. It gives us access to uh, all of our hardware. The caliper bolts are encapsulated. Come here. We gotta pull these little caps off and then we can go in with a Torx driver and pull the bolts out. Okay, this is a Torx 45 extended. I think that fits in there, that's pretty good. These actually may not be Torx fasteners, they might just be hex fasteners, but fun fact, you can use Torx bits on hex fasteners. Some say you can't, uh, I've been doing it for years. So we'll take these loose. I skipped a step and did not pull the anti-rattle clip. We'll do that in a second. Failing to adhere to order of operations. It's never good. So these guys are really easy to get out of there. We just pull them out and we'll set that aside. That's going to be reused. We have to put this back. Not very good to forget. Whoa, camera gravity. You guys are like slowly slouching. So I just need to reach in and push the, the bolts out a little bit. Got a little pocket screwdriver for that. The tip is hanging up and they don't want to release. There we go. That one moved. Ow. And then our caliper comes free. Okay. We'll set that aside on top of the rotor. We'll pull our pad. Yeah, I'm just going to hit this with a little sanding wheel real quick. We'll scuff it up and uh, just kind of prepare the surface to uh, to remate with the new rotor, because we are, we're gonna pull the rotors. So, let's pull the uh, other pad out. We'll ziz wheel those later. And I think we're needing, was that a 21, 22 for the caliper bolts? Caliper bracket bolts, yeah, 21. Two 21s. Unkicks. Nice. And then we pull our set screw out of the front of the rotor and this rotor will come free. I believe that is a Torx 30. My assumption was correct. You win some, you lose some. Now, we'll put one of the studs back in real quick. And then see if we can't get this rotor to come free. Easy peasy. That's the non-violent solution. This is to prevent the rotor from falling off and uh, chipping my floor or hitting me in the foot. Okie doke. So, taking a look at our hub here. There's a little bit of surface rust on it. Nothing major, but uh, we're going to go ahead and clean that off anyway. Got a little rotary tool here with a polishing wheel. Just gonna lightly go over this surface and polish off all that uh, oxidation. <laughs> Loud noises, sorry, forgot to tell you. Nice and shiny. Almost, almost nice and shiny. Maximum shiny, there we go. Okay, new rotor coming in. It's not a, uh, not a Volkswagen rotor, it's a CarQuest rotor. Uh, not sponsored, that's just what I have. They weren't the best, they weren't the worst. Good mid-range economical component. No, uh, that's the one we're using. The reason I'm spraying this off is because there is a coating of oil on these to prevent uh, rusting while in storage. And uh, we want to get that off of there. Come here, a little torch bit. Kicks. Let's 
See how these are dual bolt, bolt pattern. They can make one part that, does, uh, that fits more than one car. Okay, now, like I mentioned, we are gonna reuse these front pads, but I do need to scuff the surface up. So I will actually use the same uh, ziz wheel tool to, uh, to take a little bit of this surface off of here so it can re-break in with a, a fresh new surface. You can see how this one's kind of glazed and there's some grooves worn into it. We want to take all that down and just let it start over again. You know, truth be told, it's actually been a long time since I've uh, done something like this. Uh, this method also works if you're trying to iron out some random squeaky noises. Uh, what can happen is you can get some uneven wear or metal can be embedded in this, or some of these have actual like flakes of metal inside of them. And those flakes tend to, or can be larger than what's supposed to be there. So they don't flake and wear away. And so uh, on occasion, your pads can get themselves into a wear condition where they make a bunch of noise and taking, uh, taking the sander to the surface of that and then redoing that surface can actually make that noise go away. Okay, let's get this thing polished. Up. Nothing crazy. Put a little bit of a chamfer on the edge. That's another noise mitigation technique. See how we took away the gloss? There we go. And I'll do the same thing with the outboard pad. Woohoo! Okie dokes. Now the bracket can go back together and we can rehang these pads. Put that back over there. Woohoo! Hang on, guys. Come on back. There you are. So let's rehang this bracket and the pads. And then this corner will be good to go. Click. Now we can't get these particular pads uh, in the wrong position because this one has this little clip that goes into the piston up on the caliper. So we can't uh, we can't get these in the wrong position. They just they go the way that they go. Gravity, and that is to the ground. So anyway, we'll set that pad up right there. There we go. That's gonna hang out right there, and uh, let's fetch the one off the floor. Let's try this again. We'll just slide that in, push it down, and then we can uh, rehang the caliper on its bracket right here. Wiggle that in. All right. Okay, back to our Torx 45. Click. Gravity, flashlight, I caught that one, mid-air. That was great. We've got the two caps that prevent water from soaking onto those pins. We'll slide those guys back on. Then we'll come back out and get our anti-rattle clip reinstalled. Kind of easy, kind of not. These can be a, a challenge. What we're gonna do is put the pin in the calipers first and then pull it back. It's not in yet, see that right there? Since everything's a hammer, just tap it right in. Booyah, good to go. That's one corner complete. Let's go ahead and move around, I'll do the rear next. Uh, I wanna check out those rear rotors because uh, like we mentioned earlier, 
our fellas said that uh, they had gone metal to metal at one point. So let's get this thing disassembled. And we'll check the pads on the, I think it's the inboard that was the issue. Okie doke, so 14 millimeters, uh, that's the wrong millimeters. Let's try again with a 13. Yeah. All right, let's try 13. I think 13 is gonna be the winner. Yep, on clicks. It's tight. Ah, look at here. You see how that uh, inside of the bolt, or the bolt is turning the, uh, the stud there? I need to grab a hold of that with some pliers. Sometimes you can fit a wrench in there, but there's usually like a lip and it keeps that wrench from slipping onto the hex unless you have really, really thin wrenches. Yep. Yeah, we just need to hold on to, uh, hold on to that for a second. Should probably go in there with a electric ratchet. Speed things up a bit. Yeah, never mind. It's not gonna fit on the bottom one. Unclick that. Okay, caliper's coming free. This is an actuated caliper. Uh, what that means is that the hydraulic service brake system and the cable operated parking brake system is integrated into one unit. So when you pull the parking brake, it's actually gonna squeeze on the caliper via the cable and not rely on hydraulic pressure. Now, we can see here, these pads are pretty thick. I'm gonna be looking for uh, deep grooves worn into them because they said these went uh, metal on metal once and they just did a like a pad slap on it and did not uh, do anything about the rotors. Come out of there, screwdriver, pry driver, screwy pry driver. Hmm. Brake pad gravity, no worries. So yeah, these actually look pretty good too. I think I'm just gonna scuff these up as well and, and reuse these pads. So yeah, we're gonna save a little bit of money on this job. All right, so we're going down under real quick and what we can see right here, there's one of the bolts for the caliper bracket and there's the other one. And if you look real close, you'll see that those are triple square. Those are uh, European proprietary type looking designs. Meaning normal tooling does not, uh, it's not gonna fit. So we're gonna bust out the set of triple square sockets. Yeah. Is that the right one? So far so good. And we've gotta go in there with a ratchet and a swivel to uh, get these bolts out of here. It's not really getting a good bite. I don't like that. If I slip this and round it off, we're, uh, we're in major trouble. So I'm exercising caution here. Gear wrench, flexi head ratchet coming in with the universal 3 8 and an extension that should give me space and leverage here to break this loose. Go together. And I'm just gonna setting this up so I can get a good pull on it. Unclick. Oh, that's tight. That was flipping tight right there. It's not gonna work. All right, we're gonna try a more direct approach. Socket straight to ratchet. And then I can get a good pull. Man, that's tight. It was the Hulk that put this together. All right, there's the bottom one, unclicked. Wow, these guys were in there. Yeah, you're never gonna get that off without the, the right tool. Not gonna happen. It's the bolt that never ends. Look at that thing. A lot of bolt. Okay, that's both caliper bracket bolts. Let's get out of here and 
get that bracket out and then we will uh we'll pull that rotor off there we go set this over here for now how's these slide pins looking pretty good same thing torx 30. No, not beer 30 not yet pull that guy out Hmm. Aha, there we go. Ooh, nice and shiny, look at that. Beautiful. Okay, new rotor coming in again. Backwards. Clean this up, get the oil off of it. There we go. Now we can flippy flop it. Index it. Indexing meaning to reference the, uh, the little set screw right there. This thing screwed in. Click. A little bit more shiny. Very nice. Okay, let's pull the slide pins real quick. We'll give them a wipe down and re lubricate them. Got my purple lube. Ooh, that one's it's kind of tight but yeah it's nasty super thick grease in there there we go or lack thereof much more better -er. look at that okay let's get this thing bolted back in and then we'll recondition uh, those rear pads and that'll be good for this one side, then we can move over, hit that other side. Okay, now I think I'm doing this more by feel than anything, because I can't really see where these uh, caliper bolts are supposed to go through. It's really deep. Uh, hang on, pardon my noggin. I'm trying to see what I'm doing here. Okay, that's one bolt in. Started by hand, here's our second one. That one goes, that's going in the bottom right there. Very nice. Okay, back down below, let's run those guys down and put some torque on them. And then we'll come back up and hang the pads. changing tools going back to the manual ratchet and I'll use this guy to put final torque on these I swear I could feel that bolt stretch makes me wonder if these are uh, like a torque to yield one time use only kind of thing I don't think they are, but I know as tight as they are, there is some stretch that's accounted for. Cause it's German engineering, y'all. So just like the fronts, I'm gonna scuff up these pads and we're gonna chamfer all the edges and corners. <laughs> Before, after. And same thing on the before.
Beautiful. So we've got witness marks. That's where the uh, the piston is riding on these pistons, or the piston on the piston. That's where the piston is riding on the pads. Say that five times fast. And we've got witness marks over here. That's where the fingers on the edge of the caliper are also contacting the pads. So we know that this is the outboard. So we'll slide that guy back into its home. Get in there. Don't fight me or I'll hammer you. Yeah, you're asking for it, aren't you? Get in there. Yeah, real easy. And, uh, and same thing on the inboard pad. Begin going in now. Uh, I can't see, I'm gonna have to go to the other side. Uh, I can't feel it, I have to see it. There we go, no problem. Whoa. Ooh, that's kind of a tight squeeze. These rotors are thicker than the others, but they'll fit. Like so. And then our bolts. Flashlight. Flashlight down. Please line up. There we go. See, I just had to say please, and it did. Okay, caliper bolt numero dos. Let's get that guy started. Come on, caliper, line up. The reason this is so tight is we probably took up a couple thousandths of an inch of space uh, by adding a thicker rotor. And the caliper did not compress because being an actuated caliper, you've got to rotate them while pressing them back in. It's still fit though, so we're good. Kicks. Oh, we're doing that spinny stud thing again. No worries, stick some pliers on there to kind of hang on to it. And we can bring it up to torque. There we go. All right, two is done. Halfway there, let's move over to the other side. Okay, um, I'm back. You guys didn't notice. Uh, I was on the phone for like 45 minutes. So now I'm kind of trying to crunch to get this, uh, to get this thing done. It's going the wrong way. So let us unclick. Oh good, that one's loose. Let's see if this one's gonna be equally as compliant. Oh, yep. We're gonna buzz through this one the same way as we did the, uh, the left rear. Pull the caliper, pull the pads, slap the rotor on there, make it nice and shiny, lube the pins, and move on. Come on out, caliper. Thank you. You can just sit right up over Mm, nowhere. How about down there? Yeah, we'll just shove it in there. Or not. Go away. Let's see how these pads look. Oh, here's what, uh, here's the one that went metal to metal. See that? Deep, deep grooves worn in this one. So this is the one that went metal to metal and it was pad slapped. So yeah, let's, let me pull this rotor off of here. Okay, torque's 30. I'm gonna click our set screw. And we're going back down below with the big triple square one more time. Again, we're looking up from, uh, from under the car. This is the back side of, uh, of the brake assembly. We've got the control arm right here. Let's unclick these guys. Oh, that's tight, yep. Come on. Is that a flashlight? It sure was. Imagine that, flashlights falling down everywhere. It's raining lumens. Come here. Okay, that one's loose. Let's get this bottom one loose. All right, bottom one next. Oh, that's tight too. 
Ah, oh, it slipped out, didn't it? Oh no. Yeah, this is what we did not want to do. Um, okay. Nikes. It wasn't in all the way. I, I didn't notice. Uh, hammer, 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 hammer. We have to get it in all the way. That was so bad, what just happened. Mm -hmm. Um, up the creek now. Hang on guys, let's figure this out. Really can't get any force on that fastener to drive it in. I'll put an extension on it to hammer it home. Ow. Alright. That's in all the way. Will I, uh, will I be able to achieve redemption here? Here we go. Yeah. Oh, that's tight. Got it. That could have been really bad. Like bad enough to cut the thing apart and have to replace the bolt, which would not be cool. All right, caliper bracket is removed. I'll go grease this real quick and then uh, we'll get that rotor changed out. Okay, let's get out of here and get this rotor removed. Real easy like, we just pull it off. Ooh yeah. Oh yeah, 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 look at that. See all those grooves worn into this? This is where when the previous set of pads went metal to metal, the uh, backing plate of the pad was grinding into the rotor. And there's a bunch of peaks and valleys here. Uh, not really a good surface. Uh, for for a friction material. All right, rotor coming in. Oil leaving rotor. Flips and flip again. Uh, indexed. Set screw. Trying to pick up the pace at the end of the day. The last of the last of the tasks. Pick again more shiny. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, let's get this uh, slide pin lubricated real quick. Get these things out of here. Ooh, stuck. See that? It's not sliding, it, like it rotates, but it will not slide. Oh, that's in there. This one comes out, kind of. Oh yeah, look at that, that's nasty. The, the grease has broken down. That's probably why the right rear on that car went metal to metal, is if you've got stuck slide pins, then after that caliper is done compressing on the pads and the rotor, you go to release it and the pins are hanging up, which is not letting the things move around. That's not floating. So it's keeping a little bit of pressure on that brake pad. That's probably what took out the last pads were, was these slide pins right here. Interesting. I mean, I speculate, I can't prove it, but when you've got a brake pad that's worn to nothing and then another one that's in good shape, you need to take a look at the pins see if this is gonna oh that's bad yeah this is all full of nasty in here look at that yep that's that's grease okay Let's see if we can't get this other one to come out we'll twist and pull at the same time no. nope don't have the strength in my flanges, but my pliers do. Oh, come on, you. Oh, that's crazy. Look at that. It's stuck. 
Uh-huh. Kidding me right now? Danger. Alright, didn't see this coming on this job. I hope this thing was a slide hammer. And let's keep working it. Look at that. Woo! That was bad. Okay, I'm gonna need to clean some of this nasty out of here. Because even if I put grease on these slide pins, it's uh it's not gonna work. Why won't you spray PB Blaster? Dude, this is not my day. Everything's malfunctioning. Or I'm malfunctioning. Anyway, I've got a I got a nylon bristly brush here on a drill. I'll run this thing in a couple times. Okay, we're uh, we're getting somewhere, I think. Let's see if these things are gonna slide in or not. I think I cleaned out enough of the crust. Let's see. Yeah, that one's good. That one's good. All right. Let's get a little bit more uh, more grease in there. dust boots here. There's one. Nasty. It's number two. Nice. Sweet, good to go. Very messy, but the bracket's been repaired. It's gonna function as designed. Let's go ahead and get this thing put back together. Side quest complete. <laughs> Okie dokes, bracket coming back in, and the caliper's in the way. Hold that over there. Stay. Top bolts becoming threaded. That's good. Got the bottom one right here. It did survive the, the slipping event. That was not cool. I knew better. I knew better so much I even said, don't do that, Ray. And then I, I did it. Very embarrassing. No worries. I'll get over it. Go ahead and run these down. couple pulls with the extra long ratchet we'll get some torque on those and we're done down below uh oh ratchet's sticking man I can't even nothing's working today look at that my ratchets it was getting hung up I wonder if I bent the, the pawl inside or something I do put this ratchet through a lot of work forward click that's one tight and numero dos tight all right come out Go. now seeing as how these uh these rear pads went metal to metal i'm gonna have to sand the other one a little bit more aggressively than uh than the smooth one and i hope the camera picks it up but you can see here all the grooves worn into this one 
and it, this one is still relatively smooth. We need to polish all these grooves out of here. So if we're gonna be sketchy, it's gotta be full on sketchmatic. Beautiful. That actually worked a lot better than uh, than I thought. So we've got our new one, and that's the old surface there. But I'm still gonna ziz wheel these um, with the uh, pneumatic tool. That way they both have the same uh, surface finish. Plus I need to chamfer some of these edges here. Let's finish up and make these uniform. Good to go. All right. Come here, backing plate. We need you. Compressor powered down. Mm. All right, let's get these guys back in their homes. You stay right there. And same thing on this inboard. Hmm. Nope, I missed. Nope, I missed. I'm see. Still can't see. Hang on here. Bear with me, fellas. I'm, it's my first day. I don't work on Volkswagens. There. <laughs> okay. Let me out of here. Let's get this caliper refitted. And then we will be 75% complete. You gonna go in? Butamus. Okay, two caliper bolts. In the home stretch now. <clears throat> That's one. Click. Good to go. One more wheel and we're out of here. And back to the front. All right, three down, one to go. We're back up at the right front and this is about to come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's get into our little, uh, our little bolts here. We'll pull the caps off because they are encapsulated. Two caps. Back to our Torx 45, unclick. There we go. Come out, please. Nope, they're still hanging on. We'll push that out a little bit with the screwdriver here. See, as these bolts pass through their rubber seals, the rubber flexes outwards, and then when you're done uh, unthreading them, the rubber tries to push the fastener back into the hole. And it makes it a little harder to line up, or to, to remove to get the caliper off, so you have to kind of push the bolts back out a little farther, and then you can get the unit to come out. Up and flip. There's one pad, really good shape. Pad number two. 
fairly good shape. I don't know what that is, some kind of contaminant, but we'll sand that out of there. Okay. Two caliper bracket bolts. Let's bust these out. Like I said, come here, rotor. Nice. Okay, a little bit of ziz wheel action over here on the hub face. It's in really good shape, but we cleaned up the other side, so we're gonna clean up this side too. I shan't forget the shiny. Okay, new rotor coming in. We'll hang it, spray it, spray it some more, flip it, spin it. Hang it, hang it longer, don't go anywhere, bolt it, and spray it again. Nice. Okie dokes, let's toss the wheels on this thing and uh, take it for a test drive, see if it vibrates, see if it makes noises, evaluate the brakes one more time, and then uh, I think we're good to go. Hey, look at that. It's the next day, sun's just shining. Surprise, surprise, I can't get the Volkswagen out because this is this is not a service drive. It's a parking space. Look what you... I got my sign up. Yeah, I know, but I was gonna I back... I that sign up. Well, how do I take this car out there with this car in here? Figure it out. I'll ram it. Yeah, anyway, so let me throw the wheels back on this thing. We're gonna go and uh, finalize the test drive. We ended up not replacing the rotors. You guys remember this because you were just here, but I don't remember because I took the night off and went home and went to bed. Rotor's good here, that's bolted on. That does not go to this Volkswagen. That's a stainless fastener. That's bolted on, clips are on. We need more shiny on this wheel because there's fingerprints. Can't have that. Goodbye, fingerprints. Good. And how's that right front looking? We're good here. Okay, let me toss these wheels back on. We're gonna go hit the road. All right, let's hop in this bad boy and hit the road. Where's my keys? Oh, no keys. Starting the engine. Push button. Gotta wiggle it some. Foot on the brake. Come on, button. Got it. Once you got the, the muscle memory figured out for the button, it's easy, I think. All right, brakes pumped up. Let's go ahead and back her out. We'll hit the road. We'll do some stops. We'll break these pads into the new rotors. And more importantly, we're gonna be able to stop without vibrations everywhere. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do here, uh, since we did kind of recondition those older pads and they did get sanded down, is we're gonna burnish these things and get them to break in a little bit and then I'm gonna up the game some and we're gonna do a couple real high speed hard stops. We wanna wear those pads into these rotors, but we don't wanna start that aggressively immediately because we need to get, uh, we need to complete the burnishing process. And basically what burnishing is, is you're lightly applying brakes and the, the brake pads are gonna transfer some of that material into the valleys. See, there's microscopic peaks and valleys on the flat surface of the rotor and we want to fill those little valleys with some brake material from the pads that way it's a nice smooth even surface and the two units can work together to produce friction and grip and ultimately stop the car 
So we're gonna do a series of light breaks to burnish the pads in, or light breaking to burnish the pads in. Once they're burnished in and broken in, we're gonna go out on the bigger road and we're gonna do some like 65 or 70 mile per hour stops or aggressive slowdowns. The idea being is that we wanna create some wear because naturally I couldn't have achieved a flat surface when I sanded those pads uh, with the belt sander or with the little ziz wheel thing. So we wanna make sure that uh, the high spots on those pads are worn down. That way the pads can make full contact with the rotors. Show. Look, the guy wants to pass me and I'm already speeding. Oh, look, and we're stopping up here. I'm gonna take all day because you are behind me. Yeah, I'm not the not the person to, to follow so closely. I'm very petty. Okay, lightly slowing down, light brake pedal pressure, avoiding coming to a complete stop, rolling through a yellow light. Moving on. All right, we've gone through four or five uh, very light duty stops. Let's pick up some speed here. We've got a nice clearing on the big road. We're gonna get some speed and do a, a couple heavy, heavy braking events. And, uh, and that's where we're gonna really verify that there is no vibration. So our speed limit here in Florida is 85 miles per hour. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna get up to about 65, 70 right here and we're gonna get on this pedal a little bit. I'm not gonna stand on it, lock it up, but we are going to really get into these brakes. There we go. Oh yeah. It felt pretty good. I think we can squeeze one more in before the red light. No traffic, full speed. Speed detection devices? Nope, I'm not speeding yet, we're good. Braking, braking, braking. No vibration, this thing feels pretty good. I like it. I'm calling it a success. We have lost the vibration. We've got excellent stopping power, we're good to go. Headed back to the shop, I'm calling this one good. Finishing it up, I have to change the oil. But other than that, we're good to go here. So as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, or if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can start by tapping that like button and then entering your questions, comments, or concerns uh, in the comment section down below. Breaking. So again, and as always, thank you guys for watching. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of Volkswagen. Warm.